Okay, uh, thank you, Greg Savitt, Jews for Jesus. I want to thank you for being interviewed. Just got a few questions. How did you know that God was calling you into missionary service? Well, the Lord really spoke to my wife about a year before Jews for Jesus contacted me. And uh, the Lord really told her that we weren't going to be in a house too long. And I was really worried when she told me that. I thought I was going to lose my job or get fired. Or, uh, but the Lord was calling us into missions. And I got a letter from Jews for Jesus asking me to pray about becoming a full-time missionary. And I felt like something had kicked me in the stomach because I knew this was so powerful, it was from the Lord. I literally tried to rip this letter up, but I couldn't because I knew that this was my call, my destiny, that I had to accept this. Or if I didn't, I would be like Jonah, uh, that I would be in the whale for three days, and I didn't want that to happen. How long was it when you first received your call until you actually went to the field? It was actually about one year. I was a CPA in Illinois, and I had to tie things up. I had to sell my house. I had to raise support. And I left in uh, my job as a CPA. And in June of 1997, I went to New York City with my family and two children. And I preached the gospel for five weeks on our New York City summer witnessing campaign, about 10 hours a day handing out gospel tracts, talking to many different people, and that's how I first started at Jews for Jesus. What advice would you give to somebody preparing for missionary service? That it's basically about your relationship with the Lord, and that you need to surround yourself in prayer and the Word of God. And there's nothing that you can learn in the textbook from other people that you can't get by your reliance on the Lord. I wish that Maybe I had spent a lot more time on my knees as opposed to preparing for going into the field. You kind of answered the next question, which was in hindsight, after you were on the field, what would you have done differently to prepare yourself for the mission field? Um, so yeah, I did answer that. I just, I think maybe when I first got started, I didn't realize how important it was to maintain relationships with donors and churches. I thought, oh, I can just do the work and God's going to provide. But you know what? We have to maintain a relationship with you, Cooper City. And you know we're so blessed that you have us every year, that you support Choose for Jesus, that you have a missions week. There's so many churches uh, in, the, in the United States, especially South Florida, that has no emphasis, emphasis on missions. And I believe your faith and your giving to missions is one reason why the Lord has truly blessed you as a church. Share an experience that's unique to the country that you minister in, and I guess we could tell that. Share an experience that's unique to ministering to Jewish people. Jewish, Jewish people come in and they have uh, preconceptions of Jesus. They think, uh, you know, Jesus was probably uh, a Gentile or, you know, he's not for us. That they've been taught all their life that Jews cannot believe in Jesus. The one thing that every Jew in the world except Jewish believers believe, is that you can't be Jewish and believe in Jesus. So when you witness to these people, my people, they are hardened to the gospel and that they will reject you, they will yell at you, they will tell you you're uh, finishing the work of Hitler, they will, I've been spit at, I've been hit, but yet when they're angry the most, those are usually sometimes the people that God is speaking to the most, like the Apostle Paul. And if somebody's angry, that shows that they care and they're willing to interact and talk about spiritual issues. I would much rather talk to a, a hostile, angry person than a person that just is totally disinterested. Share a testimony of something that God has done in your ministry that you could call a miracle. Uh, I recently, um, in my ministry, I recently uh, had a Jewish man named Jerry and I emailed Jerry back and forth uh, about spiritual issues. Jerry uh, was a Jewish man. He was not a believer. He was asking questions about atonement, faith, miracles, uh, who's the Messiah. And he lived very far away in Kendall, so I didn't really have a chance to visit him. But one day I got a call from his wife that Jerry had been in the ho is in the hospital 
and they didn't think that he was going to make it because he has throat cancer. Well, I drove there, and that night I shared the gospel with him. I read from Isaiah 53 and John chapter 3 that Jesus is the one who will free us from our sins. And I left, and I asked Jerry, and Jerry was totally listless and pale, and he, could barely, he can't even speak. And I said, Jerry, just ask God tonight if Jesus is who he claimed to be, that he is the Messiah for the Jewish people. Well, the next morning I got a call. It was from Ingrid, his wife. And she said that Jesus visibly came into his hospital room that evening and confirmed that he is the Savior of the world. And Jerry accepted Jesus that night. And I drove 100 miles out to Kendall, and that day we baptized uh, Jerry, and he is now a new creation in Christ. And that truly is a miracle. Praise God. Praise God. Okay, that concludes it. Any good clips you might use? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've got some good ones here. All right, thanks.